All right, I want to start off by giving all praises to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, by Hashem, Rock Kadesh, the ones to the elders and apostles of Great Mills, the only time he's true. All right, man, this is um getting a quick uh, the real, all right? I'm going to call this one the real. Now, now, what does that mean? Real, flesh on my flesh, bone on my bone. I'm going to get into all this. But first, I want to talk a little bit about this whole uncle, um, niece thing. And, um, you know, it's a really wicked thing to even think about. Because um, the same thing, you know, uh, uncle sleeping with a niece. It's pretty much the same thing as a uh, father sleeping with a daughter. That's just how close uh, uh, uncle and his brother's DNA is, right? And that is why, you know, you get Genesis 38. That when his brother died, I, I, and what is that? In there, Judah's firstborn was wicked in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord slew him. And Judah said unto Owen, Go into thy brother's wife and marry her and raise up seed to her. All right, so he was demanded to go into his brother's wife because their DNA was the same. And plus they was both part of the same seed line. You come back every third and fourth generation. You and your brother, if you have the same father, have the same seed line. All right? So this is how you know that uncles are not supposed to be smashing nieces, right? And hey, it even tells you in Leviticus, you know, that it's against the law, right? Leviticus 18, and I'm going to just start at verse 12. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy father's sister. She is thy father's near kinswoman, right? And you just know your father's sister, and thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy mother's sister. She is your near kin's woman. So it's a near kin's woman. And you share the exact same DNA with your uncles and aunts as you do with your nieces. The exact same amount of your DNA. And this says it's your kin's woman. And you know if it's saying, telling a man not to uncover their fathers, you know, it's still, it's means the same thing for a woman. Uh, this verse goes both ways. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy father's brother. Thou shalt not approach to his wife. She is thy aunt's. All right, so it is even telling you, you know, not even to mess with, you know, your um, you know, brother's wives or whatever because you know they are your aunt's. So you are not supposed to be dealing with your aunt's and your nieces, all right? And like I said, if a person was to go to war, you fight in a war, you die, you know, um, your brothers are supposed to take over, you know, raising your kids and watching over your family. That is how a righteous way to do it. All right? You know, a man ain't going to feel comfortable going off and warring and fighting and war if he ain't got no one to watch out for his family, especially his seed. And you want your brothers to be thinking about, you know, treating your kids as if they their kids, not, you know, um, smashing them, all right, or sleeping with them. That, that is a very, very unrighteous thing. All right? And you can see Genesis, all right, when um, getting back to Genesis, and um, Owen knew that the seed should not be his, and he caused it came to pass when he went into his brother's wife that he spilled it on the ground, lest that he should give seed to his brother. All right? And let's see how the Lord felt about this. And this thing which he did, Displeased the Lord, wherefore he slew him also. All right, because he spilled his seed on the ground and wouldn't bring before his um his brother's seed through him because they seed was that close together. The Lord killed him also. All right, now let's get back to the um the flesh of my flesh part, Genesis 28, and I'm gonna just start at the top. And Isaac called Jacob. And blessed him, and charged him, and said to him, Thou should not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. And you never want to take a wife from a cursed nation. I right, I probably do a list and get into that anyway. And you know, so that pretty much goes for Canaan, Esau, all that. Because um, 
well, you know, I'm going to go into further details and another lesson, but if you take a wife from a cursed nation, you're going to give your kids a conflict. All right? Now, it is nothing against the scriptures and marrying a heathen or whatever, but you don't want to marry a heathen from a nation that is cursed. All right? That's going to be a very difficult thing for that your seed to have to deal with. All right? Ar arise and go to Padron to the house of Bethu, thy mother's father, and take thee a wife from this of the daughters of Levon, thy mother's brother. And God Almighty bless thee and make thee fruitful and multiply thee, that thou mightest be a multitude of people. So this is Abraham telling him that he needs to go get him a wife so that he can become a multitude of people. And Lord can bless his seed. And he gave thee the blessing of Abraham to thee and to thy seed with thee, that thou mightest inherit the land wherein thou art a stranger, which Yahweh have gave unto you. All right, so he said he was going to you know, inherit that land. All right, and Isaac sent away Jacob, and he went unto Lebron, son of Bethu, the Syrian, the brother of Rebekah, Jacob, and Esau's mother. All right, so he sent them away to these people. Now we go over to Genesis 29. Then Jacob went on his journey and came to the land of the people of the east. All right. And he looked, and behold, in a well in the field, and lo, there were three flocks of sheep lying by it. For out of, for out of that well they watered the flocks, and a great stone was upon the well's mouth. All right, so... There was three flocks of sheep, and the great stone was up on the wheel of mouth. And there, and there were all the flocks gathered, and they rolled the stone from the wheel of mouth and watered the sheep. But the stone again upon the wheel of mouth in its place. And Jacob said unto them, My brother, where's beat ye? And he said, And they said, Of Haran are we. And he said unto them, Know ye Levon, the son of Nahor? And they said, We know him. And he said unto them, Is he well? And they said, He is well. And behold, Rachel his daughter cometh with the sheep. And he said, Lo, it is ye high day, neither is it time that the cattle should be gathered together. Why ye the sheep and go and feed them? And they said, We cannot until all the flocks be gathered together, until they roll the stone from the wheel's mouth. Then we water the sheep. Uh, so they was waiting to a, a specific time for everyone to come and so they could water the sheep. And yet, and while he yet spoke with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep, but she kept them. So Rachel had her father's sheep at that time. And it came to pass when Jacob saw Rachel, the, the daughter of Levon, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Levon, his mother's brother, that Jacob went near and rolled the stone from the wheel's mouth and watered the flock of Levon's his mother's brother. And Jacob kissed Rachel and lifted up his voice and wept. And this tells you right there that Jacob had a very long and hard journey to get here. All right, so that was a um, sign of relief. He kissed Rachel and lifted up his voice and wept. Right, and he was probably so happy to have found them. And Jacob told Rachel that he was, was her father's brother. Uh, and this brother is just meaning kinsman, all right? This what it mean. You know how you meet someone and say, what's up, brother, or whatever? It's just meaning you the same people, all right? They were not, uh, they were not brothers' brothers, so these were not his um, nieces that he married, all right? And that he was Rebecca's son, and she ran and told her father. And it came to pass when Levon heard the time of Jacob, his sister's son, that he ran to meet him and embraced him, and kissed him, and brought him to his house, and told Laban all these things. And Laban said to him, Surely thou art my bone and my flesh. All right, so he said, Surely thou art my bone and my flesh. And he abode with him in the space of a month. All right, now, he said, Surely thou art my bone and my flesh. All right, now, let's go to get Genesis, the second chapter. And I'm going to start somewhere around verse 21. All right. 
And you gotta remember, sometimes these scriptures are twofold. You know, you are getting two meanings out of them. All right, cause I believe this is a twofold scripture. And the Lord Yahweh caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead of it. And the rib which the Lord gave, the Lord Yahweh had taken from man, made he a woman and brought her unto him. All right. And the reason I say I believe this is a two-part scripture, because I actually do believe he took a rib and formed a woman. All right. And that probably happened back on the fifth day on um, the first instance. But I believe this is a two-part scripture because in this instance, he is talking about a closed family member. All right. And Adam said, this is now bone on my bones and flesh on my flesh. She should be called woman because she was taken out of man. All right. And he said the same thing you just said in um, Genesis 29. Bone on my bone, flesh on my flesh. Which means that these, you know, were the same people, the same kinsmen, the same um, um, people, the same kinsmen, so what they would say brothers, you know, um, the same people. For more. Therefore, should a man leave his father and his mother and should cleave unto his wife, and they should be one flesh. Uh, and they both, and they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. So that means, you know, they was without sin. Uh, they didn't know. Now let's go back to Genesis 29. All right. All right. And let's start 15 first. And leave on saying to Jacob, because thou art my brother, thou should serve me for, for not tell me what should be thy, thy wages. All right, so he wanted to know um, what should he pay him because, you know, he wasn't going to work for free because he was his brother. And, Le and Levon had two daughters. The names of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah was tender eye, so this is telling you that Leah was fine. But Rachel was beautiful and well-favored. So Leah was fine, but Rachel was really fine. All right, so that's what they're trying to say. And Jacob loved Rachel and said, I will sell thee seven years for Rachel, thy younger daughter. And we were saying, it is better that I give her to thee than that I should give her to another man. Abide with me. And Jacob served for seven years for Rachel that, that seemed unto him but a few days. So seven years went by just like that for he loved, for he for the love he had to her. And Jacob said unto him, Give me my wife for the days of a field that I might go into her. All right, so that he might sleep with her. And Levon gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast. So they had a wedding. And it came to pass in the evening that he took Leah, his daughter, and brought her to him. And he went into her. And Levon gave unto his daughter Leah Zippa, his maid, for a handmaid. And it came to pass that in the morning, behold, it was Leah. And he said to Levon, What is this thou hast done unto me? Did not I serve with thee for Rachel? Wherefore then hast thou beguiled me? And so, you know, this was the supplanter being supplanted right here. All right, so Levon tricked um, Jacob because, as he said in the next verse, and Levon said, It must be so done in our country to give. The younger before the first born. So the older daughter had to be given away first. That was their custom. Uh, fulfill her weeks, and we will give thee this also for service, which thou should serve with me yet seven other years. So he had to serve seven more years for Rachel. And Jacob did so and fulfilled her weeks. And he gave him Rachel, his daughter, to wife also. So he worked 14 years for um, his wives, right? And uh, as you can see, that Rachel and uh, Leah was Jacob's firstborn cousins. And if you go back over to Genesis, the 21st chapter, and the Lord 
Um, Kyle said, D sweet to follow on Von Adam, and he slipped, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead. And the rib which the Lord had taken from man made he a woman and brought her home to him. And then Adam said, this is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. So she should be called a woman because she was taken out of man. Now, there's no way to know this for sure, but I believe these scriptures are hinting at that Adam married his first cousin. Right, the Eve was also his first cousin, so we know that first cousin marriage was a very common thing in these scriptures, right? Because it happened over and over and more than once, right? And you know, in um, Joshua, um, Caleb gave his daughter away to her first cousin, so first cousins is a acceptable biblical standard. And that's what I believe the scriptures were hitting it when they were seeing his real, a closed family member. So it's considered biblical, acceptable to marry a closed family member, all right? But not to for uncles to sleep with nieces or aunties to sleep with nephews and stuff like that. That is considered wicked, all right? Or for fathers to be sleeping with daughters and stuff like that. You're not supposed to sleep with no one that close to you. And that's why when you know usually when people do that, the kids come out funny. And like I said before, in the state of Texas, first cousin marriage is out loud because they was said they was having too many uh, messed up kids back when the Edomites was doing it when this country was first started. But to go beyond first cousins is considered extremely wicked because you are too keen, which was the scriptures way of saying your DNA. That one percent of DNA that's different than everybody is too similar in um, them relationships, and it causes all kinds of health problems. Right? So the scriptures had everything right, and the reason they married first cousins so much was to keep everything in the family, to keep um, you know, um, inheritance rights, land, and all that. They kept it in their family by cousins marrying cousins. That was just a common biblical practice. And uh, with that, I'm going to say, Shalom.